Thank you, Mr. Ackerman. Mr. Delahunt. Thank you, Chairman, and let me thank you in behalf of myself and Mr. Rohrbacher, the Subcommittee on Oversight's ranking member, for arranging this hearing. We are pleased to work with you once more on this particular issue and look forward to other joint hearings where our interest and jurisdiction coincide. As you indicated, this hearing will address, among a number of critical issues, the draft hydrocarbon law pending before the Iraqi parliament. This draft law, a framework draft, as I will refer to it, creates an obtuse and arcane legal structure for reorganizing the Iraqi oil industry. It's important to emphasize that it does not address, it does not address the fair and equitable distribution of oil revenue among the various Iraqi communities. So it should not be confused with the benchmark in the recent supplemental appropriation identified by Congress to be a sign of progress. In fact, legislation to ensure such an equitable distribution of hydrocarbon revenue has not even been adopted by the Iraqi cabinet, which is a prerequisite for consideration by the Iraqi parliament. Now, this framework draft was originally crafted by three Iraqi oil experts, including Mr. Tariq Shafiq, one of our witnesses today. That draft, however, has been substantially altered. The current version allows foreign oil companies to secure ownership of Iraqi oil, and it would also permit foreign oil executives to sit on a so-called independent expert panel and provide advice to a newly created Federal Gas and Oil Council, which would be the key decision-making authority under this proposed regime. And yet there appears to be no prohibition on these same international oil company executives from advising and reviewing contracts involving their companies. To state that the framework draft is controversial is an understatement. The Iraqi oil unions vigorously object to the current version, and in an open letter dated March 19, 2007, to the Iraqi parliament, a number of respected Iraqi oil experts have articulated their reservations. Numerous other stakeholders have also weighed in to express their concern and opposition. From our perspective, it's important to examine the role of the administration in the evolution of this framework draft and how it may influence resulting perceptions. Over to my right, uh, there is a timeline created by the Congressional Research Service. Obviously, we can't see it from here, but I know it's in the, uh, the packages provided by staff to members, and those who have an interest can later view it up close. But it's full of instances where the United States appeared to be encouraging substantial foreign equity participation in the Iraqi oil industry. In April 2003, a month after the invasion, the Department of State had issued a report on the future of Iraqi oil calling for the privatization of the oil sector. And 
in that same year in march after the coalition provisional authority was established the administration retained former oil company executives to assist iraqi oil officials they of course were supportive of privatization there are numerous other examples listed on the c r s timeline now when we add this framework draft to the equation it appears to some that the administration had less than a noble agenda and according to a university of michigan poll seventy six percent of iraqis said that one of the primary reasons the united states invaded iraq initially was to control iraqi oil as a result of this framework draft i have no doubt that today that percentage would be even higher for example knowledgeable iraqis have questioned why unexplored areas should be auctioned off while existing wells currently producing and discovered but not yet produce field which can meet iraqis economic needs for many years there's a growing belief that this framework draft would benefit international oil companies to the long term detriment of iraq and the iraqi people as one of our witnesses notes this is a very divisive issue within iraq and appears to have been planned under pressure from both within and without there's a real danger that a perception will take hold that we the united states the administration pressed passage of this framework draft to benefit ourselves as a kurdish law mac lawmaker recently noted this has always been the, the case. Washington has been pushing the Iraqis to fit their agenda. Those are his words. And we should re remind ourselves that this sentiment is not limited to Iraq. Again, recent polling reveals that 79% of respondents in four Muslim countries, Morocco, Indonesia, Pakistan, and Egypt, felt that the United States' aim was to maintain control over Middle East oil. And a framework draft perceived to be favorable to international oil companies will support that belief. If this passage or rather if the passage of this framework draft is interpreted to be an exploitation of Iraq's most coveted natural resource then our reputation and prestige could very well suffer even further and a claim that we fought to free Iraq will be rejected out of hand by the Iraqi people and by others as well and our national interests will suffer in the long term so it's my belief that it is of critical importance that congress be clear to the people of iraq that we respect their sovereignty and whatever decisions they make regarding their natural resources and with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back and look forward to hearing from our witnesses.